Okay, um, so from the, ta from the list of uh, operations that we have to do, navigation, it's already covered, okay? What we're going to see now, it's, we're going to begin with the operations of reading data from a database. In particular, in this video, we will see the R, the R from from reading. Okay, so we will uh, read data from the from the database. So we need to come to Firebase, Firestore database, and um, I have in the collection of users two users. Now, if you don't have any data, please uh, add at least two objects, okay? And um, I have my two objects, which is this one and this one, have a property called name. This is a property, okay? A property called with the email and this, the two emails have the same, mm, the same text. So I will change the first one and I will say, for example, John. So I have two users in this uh, uh, the, uh, database. One is john at gmail.com and the other one is pedro at gmail.com. Okay, so what I want to do is to be able to show here in my application the data from the da database. Right. Um, so we, we are in the Tinder Udemy English and uh, I need only one page. I will do everything in one page and I have, let's see which one is the one that loads first because it, it doesn't really matter at this point, to be honest. Like um, I will be doing a lot of uh, back and forth, uh, uh, back and forth uh, from with um, data with uh, the same application like deleting pages, creating them again. Now, now it's not really important. So the first page that loads, it's login. Okay, here is where I, where I will do everything. I will delete this button and I have, I have nothing. I have a, a page with nothing. Great, that's what I want. And um, I will display all the data inside a column that is inside a home page. And inside this column, I will create a row and inside this row, I will add a text. Okay, column, inside the column is a row. Look that it's indented. You see the level of indentation. The column is inside the home. The row is inside the column. Why do I know this? Because you can see that it's a bit indented inside. Okay, so that means it's inside. It's not at the same level. And the text, it's inside the row. Okay, and um, now I need to tell this column to connect with my database and retrieve the user's data. How can I do that? Um, I will come here to the Firestore, okay? Um, I will say that I will create a collection. The collection will be users. Well, actually the collection is created already, but now what I'm telling... Um, Sorry for the phone call. Um, where was I? Yeah, so we need to tell, to create the schema of the data database. And um, we don't, well, that's not really, this is not really important, but the important is that we need to have, the, um, it needs to map this, uh, this um, user's collection. There must be an equivalent in our fire, Firebase. Okay, so I have a user's collection here, that's correct. And I have here determined a user's collection in Flutterflow, in the Connect Firestore. And also I need to be to have defined at least the same property, exactly in the same um, structure. I mean, it, uh, if it's caps lock, it's caps lock. If it's... Um, uh, not caps lock, then must be, it must be exactly the same structure, like uh, this text with the text of the property of the database. Okay. And in my case, I have it. So once I have this and the other properties, um, I can have them or not have them. It's not important now. 
If, uh, if, I, if you have only email, it will work also, okay? It doesn't really matter. Um, but at least the email, the, the email property and the user's collection must exist in both places. And the Firestore database must have data in the, you need to have at least two objects with this property. Take into account that these two objects are different, but it doesn't matter because now the only property that I will um, be loading in the in Flutter flow will be the email. So both objects have an email there, then it should work. Okay. Right. And how do we load this in the Flutter flow? So we come here and in the column level, in the column level, we have this, we have, we have this button here. Okay. If you click on backend query, you should click on this button, add backend query. And then uh, you are um, asked to choose one of these options. And um, what we need to do, like the differences are query collection. It's like when you want to retrieve several documents of a collection, which is our case. If you wanted to retrieve only one document, you should choose this option on the document from a reference. And we should provide with the reference that points to that uh, document. The reference in this case, for example, if I want to retrieve this object, the reference, it's this one, right? Users collection slash the ID of the document. Okay. Um, and then API calls, it's when we want to, well, we will see this when we do the, we, we will see this in more detail because it needs uh, its own video. In the Algolia search, we're not going to cover this. I'm not going to cover this in this tutorial. So what we need is a QR query collection. We click in confirm query collection, confirm. And then here I must tell Flutterflow which collection, the collection users and which query type list of documents, only one document. And uh, no, in this case we want a list of documents or count the documents. No, we want a list of documents. There's no limit. Like, um, this is all, these are all, uh, advanced, uh, settings that, um, I'm not going to cover them all in the, in this course, but you should, well, and, and in fact, they're kind of self-explanatory, right? If you read it here, they explain each field, what is for, and if I want to filter something in this case, no. And, um, if I want to order it by some field, no, neither. If it's a single time query, is that something that I query only once and I'm not listening for changes? No, it's not the case. And uh, we will leave it like this. So we click confirm. And now it's telling me that if there are several documents, uh, all the children's, uh, all the widget children's of column will be um, repeating, uh, self repeating for each of the documents. What does it mean? It means that if I have two objects, there will be two rows. Okay. If I have 20 objects, this column will load 20 rows. Since I have two, only two objects, I should see two rows with two texts. Okay. Now, if I load this, what I should see, it's two hello worlds. Let's see if it works correctly. Or maybe I get an error. I think I should get an error now. Yeah, build failed. Yeah, exactly. I guess you also are seeing this error. I will tell you how to fix it now. <laughs> okay. And um, as you see, I have two hello worlds because I have two objects. Okay. And, um, this, you have, you have to come here to the fire store. Okay. To this section called rules and change this property to true. Why is this? Well, this is something I will cover later. It's about security, but it's, um, Firestore, the way Firestore manage security, it's through rules. 
If I reload now, you see I'm not loading anything. I'm not loading anything because I'm telling you have it like this, then you will be loading nothing. So you must come here, file store database, rules, and then you have to select this property in line nine, with that says that all documents, you must allow them read or write. Now it's set to false for security res reasons. And now for the develop, for the process of learning, we will leave it as true. In a, in, a pro, in a production application, this is not recommended. In fact, it's really dangerous. But for now, for the learning, um, for the learning, uh, for the purposes of learning, we will leave it like this to make it easier. Okay, so you need to have in Firestar database rules, this property as true. Okay, and you have to click on, the, um, on this button up on the right. Once you've done this, if you reload again, the your Flutter Flow app, you should see two objects. Two, or, or I don't know if you have three, three, if you have five, five, and if you have none in the Firestore database collection users, none. If I add a new object, okay, with the property email, laura at gmail.com, and I save, and I come here, look, you see, instantly, I didn't click on reload, and instantly, the third object appeared here. That's one of the magic things of, um, of uh, Firebase that has um, real-time uh, update. It's continuously listening for the changes in the database and um, with sockets and things like that. And it's um, with, uh, without the need of reloading, it's uh, uh, updating for the changes. Of course, we can disable that when we created the query, the query collection, we could... Um, if we set it as single time query, then it's not listening for changes, okay? But for now, we will leave it like this because I like this, um, this feature. Right, but we're not seeing the email. How do we change, how do we make it to, to see for the email? We must come to the text widget, okay? And then in the text widget, uh, remember that the menu on the right is showing the a sub menu of whichever widget we have selected and the, here in the text instead of hello world that is a static string right it's a string that we are determine, determining uh, manually we will tell it to load we click here in this button to load the user's document because uh, since the widget parent is loading the user's collection this row has access has access to to his um, user document, okay? So to the, to the user's document, I want to load the email, right? And now, if we reload this, we can see the emails, okay? John, Pedro, Laura. Um, if you come to the database, and for example, I change Laura for Jenny, I click update, look, uh, it updated automatically, okay? If you do make this exercise of, uh, or I come Pedro and I say Pedro to update, look, well, you didn't have time to see it, but it changes, well, it's so fast, it's so fast, that I didn't even have time to change the, the, the tab and it was already updated. You can, do the, you can do it home and you will see how updates in a matter of milliseconds. Um, okay, so um, that's it with the, we, we have managed to make read operations. See you in the next video.